Thank you. Uh, good to be here. Good to see a good attentive audience. And uh, the Hopfield model uh, was created uh, for an Isinglass um, uh, spin particles. Dr. Hopfield had got a good uh, theory of that. The, um, all, lots of particles interact, go to a minimum energy. Um, uh, physicists know about that. He said, we can apply that to the brain. Many neurons interacting can go to not, not a physical energy minimum, but let's call it a Hopfield energy minimum. And the unique thing about this is that minimum Hopfield energy corresponds with maximum mental coherence, best answers. Some of which, he, as he pointed out, apply to the flash of insight. Ron, have you heard of the joke uh, by a physicist, Nobel Prize physicist, Richard Feynman, uh, back in the days when he was uh, giving his uh, Feynman's, famous Feynman's lectures on physics uh, back at Caltech. Um, and he's go pacing back and forth like this. And one of the students say, say, Dr. Feynman, uh, when you're lecturing to us, why do you pace back and forth so furiously? Huh? Me? Pace? Furiously? Thinking about it, thinking about it. Aha! I know. I uh, need a way to tell that all of you are understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> and when I'm pacing back and forth like this, I know you got it because all your eyes are following me like this. <laughs> well, we partly got there. Uh, anyway, um, Dr. Feynman presented with the problem, took a while, got an answer, flash of insight with excitement and enthusiasm and joy. Humor uh, plays on this. Your audience, presented with a problem, namely the joke, thinks about it, and you have to solve the problem, what's funny about the punchline. The characteristics uh, of this are similar, a similar pattern, and as um, Thomas Kuhn, in his very famous book, Structure of Scientific Revolutions, says, similarly, uh, there's a structure to how people change their mind in response to science. Whereas they're doing normal science, they have one view, uh, they gradually change their minds to a different paradigm, and now you try to communicate that paradigm to other people and it's incommensurate. Their brains are orthogonal to the new paradigm, and they must mentally convert. Not unlike a religious conversion. They have to have an epiphany. Epiphanies and flashes of insight and mental arrivals of various sorts, including humor and laughter, are all covered by our problem-solving brain, of which Hopfield is the best model I know of. And it's physics. It's a physics model of a physical system following rules. And, and these, the patterning, I'm pointing out to you, uh, the structure in um, uh, Kuhn's terms, are the rules of a physical system. And um, uh, ch chaos theory is in here, and, and uh, not far behind is another one I can't think of at the moment. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, now, so my talk is going to be uh, give you some other uh, historic flashes of insight, uh, review, make sure we understand the patterning of the structure, and, um, oh, I know what it is. Uh, it, uh, hopefully, out of this, you'll realize, won't be able to say much about it, that uh, what we're now talking is the domain of physics, human brain. Some of our lectures this morning were about the physiology of the brain, and then, then there's neuroscience. This is a big one. Dr. Hopfield's model should be right up on top. Thank you very much. This is complexity science. Are we together? So one of the earliest and perhaps best known of ancient uh, flashes of insight uh, back in the 4th century AD, what, who was that? Archimedes. You didn't get that puzzle. Um, suspecting that the goldsmith might have replaced uh, some of the gold given to him uh, by uh, King Eero, um, the, the king asked Archimedes to determine whether the wreath was pure gold. Because the wreath was a holy object dedicated to the gods, Archimedes could not disturb the wreath in any way. Ar Archimedes happened to go to the bath. 
And according to Victruvius, a Roman architect, first century uh, AD, uh, he said, and getting into the tub, Archimedes observed the more the body sank, the more the water ran out of the tub. He jumped out of the tub, excited, and ran down the streets, Eureka, or Eureka, I have found it, I have found it. Do you see the pattern? Do you see the structure? Uh, closer to uh, our own time uh, is the French mathematician Henri Poincaré, I hope I spell it right, uh, 1854 to 1912. Um, and Poincaré is repeatedly um, quoted in the literature of creativity, uh, invention and problem solving, and um, which incidentally this book is all about. Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Robert Persig in this book is helping us understand how to use our own problem solving brain to make breakthroughs, how to use our own best abilities to achieve uh, flashes of insight, uh, or like unto it, and, uh, which is, uh, by the way, an uh, unconscious process because it's unconscious. Most philosophers don't pay any attention or talk about it at all. It doesn't exist in our civilization, more or less. Per Percy wants to correct that. He calls the mental arrivals crystallizations. Here's what he says about uh, Poincaré, quoting him. He has a whole section on Poincaré, um, which we don't have time to um, uh, go over that much. Um, uh, Percy says, eventually I came to Poincaré. Here again, um, hold on, that's the beginning, the, later on, three pages later you saw it. Then Poincaré illustrated how a fact, a fact mind you, is discovered. And that's what uh, Kuhn has been talking about in his whole entire book. He uh, described generally how science arrived at facts and theories. But now, uh, Poincaré penetrated more narrowly into his own personal experiences with the mathematical functions that described his early fame. Fourteen days, he said, he strove to prove that there couldn't be any such functions. Every day, he seated himself at the work table, stayed several hours, and tried a great number of combinations to reach no, and reach no results, frustration, blockage. Then, one evening, he gave up. One evening, contrary to his custom, he drank black coffee and couldn't sleep. Ideas arose in crowds. They collided and interlocked and stuck, making stable combinations. Those are the ones we pay attention to. A wave of crystallization had taken place. The next morning, he had only to write out the results. Think about that. He described how a second wave of crystallization just, uh, was guided by analogies established by the mathematical um, um, mathematic, um, uh, mathematics produced what he later called the Thetis uh, Fusion Series. He left Keynes in France, where he was living, uh, to go on a geological uh, excursion. He had forgotten. He had given up. Very important things about how to get a flash of insight. The change in travel made him forget mathematics. He was about to enter a bus. At the moment he put his foot on the step, an idea came to him without anything in his uh, former thoughts having paved the way to it that the transformations he had used to define the theta fusion functions were identical to those of non-Euclidean geometry. Solution that he had been needed arrived automatically. He didn't verify the idea, he said, he just went on with the conversation on the bus, but he felt perfect certainty. Later, he verified the results at his leisure. A later discovery occurred while he was walking by a seaside uh, bluff. It came to him with just the same characteristics of brevity, suddenness, and immediate certainty. After another discovery occurred while he was walking down the street, others eulogized the process of the mysterious working of a genius, but Poincaré said, was not content with this, uh, such a, a shallow explanation. He tried to fathom more deeply what had happened. Poincaré is no mean uh, mathematician or personality. Uh, those are significant words. Do we can get a time check? Pardon? Huh?
How many minutes do I have? Oh, uh, you have five minutes. Thank you. But for the talk, so that's three. Yeah, that's good. Um, so uh, let's uh, review um, the pattern, uh, pattern sequence, a uh, structure, as Kuhn would say. First, a person becomes aware of a major problem. Strenuous attempts to solve it, which probably proceeded automatically, with very long durations. Strenuous effort, struggle, 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 and more struggle. And if no progress, the best thing to do is finally give up, quit. Do something else, take a break, get a cup of coffee, relax, diversion, go talk to people, on a holiday, etc. Then, at the oddest moments, totally unexpected, totally unexpected directions of arrival or relationships unrelated to what the person was doing at the time. Out of the blue. The person feels absolutely certain the answer is correct, usually, and usually the answers are remarkably good. The right one you want, the best one you want, at up to the 95% level. Now you have to think about it. It took me a long time to realize, well, why can our brain automatically find good answers? Give it a chance of quiet and break and not doing something else. Uh, which, so what it really means sitting around doing nothing is highly important. The most, the most important activity you can come into if you really want to get good ideas, solving problems in teaching and research, do nothing, drink coffee. Sit around. Have a paper and pencil always with you. How many people always have a paper and pencil, pen with them? How many people? Hold your hand. For the very purpose, if you don't write it down right away, it'll be gone. And if you don't make little scratch notes, uh, just a little tidbits of what you came up with as you're writing it down, it'll be gone. No, uh, no. Those are the rules, uh, and you know uh, about them. Uh, about one minute left. About one minute left. So, uh, anyway, the, the, you, once the answers come, joy, uh, elation, thrill, similar to jokes and humor. And the next time something similar comes along, you're much faster. Permanent and instantaneous learning has happened. Wow. Uh, anyway, uh, now all of this is in Kuhn. Now for groups of people doing science, how they move into the new area called paradigm. That paradigm found by them was uncommunicable, uncommensurate uh, to other people. It's like they're orthogonal to it. You present this to the person and all I can see is the edge of the paper, nothing. Major messages for communication the individuals and scientists, major messages from Kuhn um, to all of our society. Read Kuhn. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions for Henry? So if you would summarize this in one take up. What would, what would you suggest would have be? been? There's a lot of good stuff that you shared. You uh, a, a couple things. Um, uh, quickly, read Zeddy on motorcycle maintenance. It'll help you with your teaching. It'll help you know how best and better to use your own human brain, your own good, good God-given skills, without telling you what to do. Uh, it has messages about teaching and about good writing. And it messages again and again and again, what is best? How does our brain know what is best? And my point is, it's a biological survival skill. If we didn't know how to immediately get what was best, pretty darn quickly, quite reliable, we wouldn't be here. Major message. Another one, after uh, after uh, our motorcycle maintenance, Kuhn. Yeah, I read the Kuhn. And what's the third one? Well, it's, uh, it's the older version. Uh, this is the new age version of Zenyar uh, <laughs> motorcycle maintenance. And uh, now, uh, oh, I have handouts. I should have handed them out to you. I'll, I'll pass them around or maybe our, um, someone else can. i uh, pass these out, they're, they, uh, they're not uh, directly related to my talk. I uh, hope I have enough here. Some of you already have a copy. Uh, there's a bunch of links to uh, what you should read. Uh, the first one is to a good, really neat article about Kuhn. Uh, I had put off reading Kuhn. I'd known about him 70, since 62 when it came out um, and uh, put off doing it. I was following up on the topic of constructivism something I've yacked at about you all a great deal. I finally decided I better go look up and make sure I'm right about constructivism. Ran across Wikipedia. Wikipedia said in it, Kuhn talked from the constructivist point of view. We construct in our own brains what's there. Physics are const 
students are constructing physics, they're not being told it. Uh, so constructivism is something Kuhn did, and I said, well, let me have a look this up. I found the, uh, the first link there to the Manchester Guardian, a highly recommended uh, new news uh, paper on a web page now, and it discussed Kuhn and said it was the most widely referred to book ever. And I said, well, maybe, just maybe, just maybe there might be a few flashes of insight in there. The book is all about flashes of insight and communicating the flashes of insight. What were the blockages to people in history to make discoveries of various sorts? Galileo wanted a pendulum, excuse me. Galileo needed a way to time. He had been using da da di da di da to time his rolling spheres and dropping objects. He was at, very quietly at rest at a cathedral, sitting um, mentally unoccupied. Good thing to do, that's the thing you got to do. Sit around doing nothing. How, uh, and be ready for a flash of insight and falling asleep, waking up. Those are the important ones. Um, and um, uh, you'll be surprised is that a task you have decided to do, if you fail to do them or forgot them, will come back automatically. You, uh, you, a task will always come back to him. Though he was sitting there in the cathedral, oh, just when, and quietly he saw the, the, lamp, the uh, chandelier swinging because they've been left go after being illuminated, uh, lighted the candles, and he measured it with his heart. Big swing, smaller swing, same time. Galileo at that point invented, invented the pendulum clock. Archimedes invented density. Thank you. Thank you very much.